All right, everyone. So thank you so much for joining us today for a Tech Tuesdays workshop on enhancing soft skills with AI and bridging technology and human connection. Um, my name is Stephanie Garcia. I am the Associate Director for the North Campus Learning Des Resources Department. And I am very excited to be here on sharing uh, this information. And um, today we're just going to have a quick conversation, right, on how we can use AI to enhance our soft skills. And there is a big problem out there that, you know, the workforce is having at the moment that um, students that are coming out of the of college, are their soft skills are lacking, right? So here's a, a, a overview, it's going to be a quick overview on how we can actually um, use some technology with AI enhanced um, to bridge this uh, human connection, right, to enhance our soft skills. All right. So the agenda for today, um, my the introduction, again, my name is Stephanie Garcia, and, and um, I am um, a my background is in business and I am super passionate about soft skills. Um, so first we're gonna go over our introduction, uh, what are soft skills, understanding soft skills, and a quick AI overview and um, you know how we can, and then I'm gonna show you some AI tools that are gonna help you enhance the soft skills. All right, and at the end, we're just gonna have some fun takeaways and anything, any questions or, you know, any um, anything that you would like to add, we will have that at the end. All right, so um, this is, you know, I like your participation. I need you to participate in this, in this um, presentation. So this is gonna be our first question in the chat. If AI could do one of your chores forever, which one would you happily never do again? So just you know, share your share comments on the chat. Which one would you happily never do again? For me, it would be laundry. So I can do that, right? I can X. Oh, I love it. Terry, Terry, cleaning toilets, yeah. <laughs> washing dishes, yes, every day, right? Especially after the pandemic, in the pandemic that we were washing dishes all, all day. <laughs> so yes, um, and I wrote, um, so uh, you know, same cleaning bathroom. Okay, interesting. So cleaning bathrooms is the, our most popular. For me, it would be laundry for sure. Um, so um, let me see. I did that. There we go. All right, so that's a quick, fun question, right? Um, so what is going to be our objective today? Um, how can we improve soft skills using AI tools? So in this workshop, I want to explore uh, the intersection of artificial intelligence and essential soft skills like communication, teamwork, problem solving, and adaptability, or, you know, reduce the resistance to change, right? We are changing every day, everything is changing, everything is moving super fast, right? Um, also this workshop, I want to provide an insightful overview of the soft, soft skills. What are soft skills? How do we put them into practice, right? And also the AI tools that we're gonna use to enhance them. Um, I chose, there's many soft skills, but for today's purpose, I did cho choose this four um, soft skills, which I, in my research, they showed as being the most important and the most um, popular right now in 2024. All right. So, you know, I will show you also uh, what the, uh, I will demo some of the the soft skills, um, the tools that I found and how I connected them with, you know, the AI tools and how they're connected with the soft skills. Okay. So let's move on. So our first, uh, our first, uh, you know, point is going to be understanding soft skills, right? 
what do you think soft skills are? What what is that? Um, what it, why why are they so important? If you can comment in the chat, that would be great, right? is, well, what do you think it is? Is it, you know, a skill that we learn, a skill that it's, you know, easy to learn, or just a skill that, um, you know, like, um, let me see. Yes, you are correct. Soft skills are transferable between jobs. Yes, Ms. Smith, um, that is true, yes. Anybody else wants to comment? on what are soft skills? Yes, thank you, Terry. Yes, that is how to get along with others to achieve common goals, right? So let's look at a quick definition of soft skills. So soft skills are non-technical skills that relate to how you work interact with others and handle various situations in a professional environment. So in summarizing is how you communicate, how you work in a teamwork environment, how you um, how you uh, work on a project, how you make decisions because in our work in the workforce we do need those skills on an everyday basis. So unlike hard skills, which are specific teachable abilities or you know knowledgeable sets, um, soft skills are more of a behavior or personality and an approach to work and interactions, right? So in the workforce, in the professional environment, these are essential for professional and um, success. So um, these are this is a short uh, summary of what soft skills are. Again, for the today's training purpose, uh, here are you know the four key soft skills that I chose, and also that are going I'm going to uh, merge with the AI tools, right? So the first one is communication. Communication is the ability to convey information clearly and effectively, right? And both in in a both in a verbally and a um in a writing environment. Um, so basically, we do need to have this skill it's essential in the workplace, right? We all communicate in different ways, but with enhancing this soft skill, we can um, learn to communicate and come to a happy medium where we can actually, where our um, the information is being transferred in a logical and uh, professional way. Right. Um, the next one is teamwork. It's the ability to work well with others. Right. Uh, we need to work with people every day. We deal with people in this environment, even if you are working in your classroom and in, in a, at a job family. It's, you know, teamwork is an essential soft skill um, problem solving. Problem solving is another um, essential soft skill. It's the ability to identify issues, analyze potential solutions, and implement them right there, right? Sometimes we do need to problem solve in a quick way. And it again, it's an, uh, this can be in any scenario, in the professional, in the educational, any, any scenario that you're in, this soft skill is very essential. And this one is the big one, right? Adaptability is the ability to adjust to new situations, challenges, change, right? And in the workplace, this is constant. We have everything changing around us. AI, um, new, uh, uh, new developments in the technology uh, world. Um, every day, it's a changing and constant um, workplace or environment that we're in so we do need to have adaptability and learn to move with those changes ahead so okay so here's our next question so if ai could help you master one soft skill instantly which one would it be and why you can put it in the chat Uh 
I'm going to say problem solving will be mine. Communication, problem solving, problem solving, yes. And change, right? Change adaptability is also very important. Adapting, yes, it is the toughest because, you know, it's, you know, and all of them, they they work together, right? They all have, they, you all, you need one, the, each soft skill supports another one, right? So in order to have good problem solving skills, you need to have good communication. If you need to have, you know, if you need to adapt, you need to have, uh, you know, teamwork. You need to learn how to adapt to that teamwork and work with them, right? And communicate. Communication is very, very important nowadays. All right. So thank you all for sharing. All right. So let's move into AI, right? Um, what is AI? And this is just a quick overview. I know everybody has been hearing about it everywhere. AI stands for artificial intelligence, right? For our, uh, for the the robots are coming, right? So um, this is what AI stands for. Um, so let's go in and deep, and let's go uh, dive and see a little bit of AI overview. So what is AI? Um, AI is artificial intelligence. It refers to simulation of human intelligence. So pay attention to that, right? Simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think and learn like humans. Okay, so AI, right out of the bat, they are not humans. They don't have empathy, right? They cannot think like humans. So the soft skills are not going to be incorporated in an AI machine, right? So that's a very important uh, key. And that's a very important fact that, you know, AI, it's machine learning. They're gonna be programmed to think and learn like humans, but not humans, right? So um, these intelligence systems can perform tax, tasks that require human intelligence, so that, such as recognizing speech, making decisions and translating languages, okay. So they can make decisions, right? But they're gonna be decisions based on data that you are going to feed the machine, right? And that, the decisions, they're just gonna give you a, an option. You are the one as a human to make the decision. All right, so here's another little quick overview on how does AI work. So, AI systems are process, they process large amounts of, um, of data and they identify patterns, right? So the more that you, you, you feed the pattern to the machine, the more that they're going to give you, you know, a, the, a, a solution or a, a decision, right? Uh, or predictions. So these machines are, you know, constantly learning and learning and learning from us. Right, so we are the ones teaching this these um these machines. Um, they use algorithms which are sets of rules or instructions to process this information, and uh, machine learning is a subset of AI. So they allow systems to learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. Right, so it's through experience and through you know patterns. Right, um, deep learning. Um, it's another subset of machine learning. So this one uses natural networks with many layers, hence the deep, right, to analyze various factors of data. So as you know, as you feed the machine more data, it's going to start recognizing the patterns and basically make decisions or give you the solutions right there because of that. All right. So this is a word that we've seen a lot, right? GPT, chat GPT. What does GPT stand for? So GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer, all right? It's a type of machine learning. It uses deep learning and large database of training text. And it also generates new text in response to a user user's prompt, right? So when we use chat GPT, uh, have you all already tried using ChatGPT? I'm, I'm guessing yes. You can put it in the chat. Yes, excellent. Okay, so this is what GPT stands for. So generative new text in response to a user's prompt, right? The GPT, you put a prompt and it gives you an answer. 
but then again, this GPT has been trained and it has been recognizing the same patterns so that, you know, it will give you, sometimes it, it will give you the answer, it will give you a solution, it will give you another option. All right. So here's our, the bread and butter of this presentation, right? How are we enhancing, how can we enhance our soft skills with AI tools? So in my research, I found a few AI tools that, uh, that enhance the way that you communicate, the way that you problem solve, and the way that you use it in a teamwork environment, and also in a way that you can adapt to change, all right? So the first one is we're going to go into the communication soft skills. Why do we need communication soft skill? Why is it important, right? So effective communication is crucial for any organization. It's it's crucial, right? If you don't know how, how to communicate with your coworker or with uh, your colleague in school, then it's going to, you know, it's not, it's, it's very detrimental for the organization. Clear and concise communication is essential to ensure that everybody is on the same page, right? Sometimes the way that I say a word, it doesn't mean the same way to another person, right? So we need to find that happy medium where we can communicate and transfer that uh, the message in an appropriate way. Um, there's different, like I was just saying, there's different communication styles, language barriers, and misunderstandings, which can all pose challenges to effective communication. So um, here are some of the AI tools that I found that uh, will help you enhance communication. The first one is Grammarly. Uh, Grammarly, it's an, a popular AI tool that helps you with grammar, spelling, punctuation, and style suggestions, right? And let me show you how it looks like. All right. So here's Grammarly. This is a, you can put a, it will give you a document and in the document you will put whatever you want to write, right? And it will um, it will help you. It will give you like options, suggestions, um, right? It will give you a option, a suggestion. Um, you know, if you have a misspelling, if you have something that you need to um to uh, revise then it will give you that option, right? It also uses generative AI. So it's constantly working. And whenever um, you can also uh, add it into your, integrate it into your browser. So whenever you write anything um, in your browser or you're writing uh, papers, a, a Grammarly will take over and help you um, write that information better right? And hence make that communication better. So um, this is how it works. You know, I like the chocolate of the, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's going to be saving all the time, all the information that you are feeding it. And again, it's going to give you suggestions on how to write it better, how to make it better, how to, it sounds better. Okay. Um, here you have your uh, your dashboard right here. You can upload a file, and it will it would actually identify any grammar or any issues that your document may have. All right, I use this a lot um, when writing a, a, an email. It's a very important. It's a very cool uh, tool. Um, the next one that we're gonna look at it's Replica. So Replica is a really cool uh, chatbot. So it's a chatbot that can help you uh, have conversation and improve your conversation skills. This is very important, um, you know, for new students that are, that are going into the workforce that need some, um, some help with interviewing skills or answering a question from an interview. Replica is a chat box that will ask you questions that will ask will, will actually have a um a conversation with you. Let me show you what it looks like. 
So this is replica. This is uh yes, this is the 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 free version, right? There's also the the paid version, as everything right now. All you have the free and the paid version. So this is you know replica. She would actually like, how's my day going? Like my day is going great, right? And then it would ask, it would give me another uh, a question, like, why would you like to talk today? Like, that's awesome. What What's making it great, right? So it's it's like um, feeding is actually asking me questions and it's giving me like, um, you know, I need help with my interview, right? And then Replica is going to tell me, okay, you know, like it's actually talking, I'm talking to a machine, right? It's not a human, but, you know, it's it's a good way to practice your conversational skills. So you see, um, it's going to keep asking me and probing me on what I need help. Uh, how can she help me? And, you know, it's a very, very, it's a very cool tool. The next one that we're going to look at, it's Wordtoon. This is very similar to... Um, is going to be very similar to um, a Grammarly, right? It's also a free powered AI writing assistant and that it helps you improve your writing by offering suggestions. It's also incorporated in your browser. So you can also use it in your browser. You can use it on your phones so that, you know, um, I think the, uh, the app gives you the option of using it with your um with your keyboard on your phone, okay? So it's also like a great um, tool that is gonna enhance your clarity. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna ensure pro proper tone. So let me show you what Wordtoon looks like. So this is Wordtoon, right? Um, I, again, I am going to, I like chocolate. And okay, I don't like it. So I'm going to ask Wordtune to rewrite it. Again, these are all in AI enhanced, right? Um, chocolate is my favorite food and it's giving me all these wonderful options, right? Um, the chocolate I like is delicious. This is my favorite treat. Chocolate is my favorite treat. Okay, so I want to make this, you know, my tone a little bit more casual. I love chocolate, you know, my favorite treat is chocolate. So it's making it a little bit more casual, right? Um, but no, I, I need to make it more formal, right? I'm, I need to put it in an email. So let's go and just, you know, ask it, ask for it. You know, my, my favorite treat is chocolate. I enjoy chocolate as a treat. So it's giving me all this tone. This giving me all these options that I can use when communicating, right? It can shorten that little sentence, right? I love chocolate, it's gonna shorten it, or it can expand and elaborate. So then then you have more options. So this is all it's an amazing tool that is gonna make it, you know, like uh help you work with your communication skills and enhance them, right? Um again, you still have to work with them, right? You have to you have to keep learning and you have to see what works for you, but you know, on uh, it with communication and working with your tone and everything else this is a great tool as well all right so let's go back our next soft skill that we're going to touch upon is teamwork right uh teamwork is essential it's an essential skill to keep us accomplished and it's an organizational goal and for for the objectives right teamwork leads to learning you always are learning from everybody right and um Tim Bork also cultivates communication and strong work relationships. So, you know, networking is a it's a it's a great skill to have. It also it will help you, you know, move on and promote and, and help you promote in your in your job or you know professionally, or just you know, networking, you know, to have some good relationships, right? As humans, we do need relationships. We need to have the human connection. All right. So as for teamwork, here are some of the AI tools that I, you know, I found, right, that will help you. So the first one that I found is called Asana. Asana is a project management tool that helps the team organize, track, and manage the work. Again, everything is AI driven, so it's not exactly the AI 
bot, right? But it's AI, it's enhanced with AI. So it was gonna drive, it's AI driven task assignments and due, the, due dates, it's gonna give you due date suggestions. Um, it's gonna automatize uh, your routine and tasks that are reminders that or the team may have, right? And it's an integration with other productivity tools such as Google Drive and Microsoft Teams. So it works together with those. So let me show you what this um, tool looks like. All right, so this is my dashboard. This is going to be Asana, right? I have my project X. I am working on my project X. I can invite my teammates from Teams. I can invite my teammates from Google Drive. So, and, and I can assign people what, um, what, a, what tasks they need to work on. Asana is gonna grab that and it's gonna send the reminders so that you know the task can be completed on time. You can add tasks, you can add a presentation, you can work together in the presentation. And again, it's a feedback evaluation. So it's a learning, it's actually a learning tool that will help you work in a teamwork and collaborative environment. And you will have your inbox, you have your reporting tools that is great to see who's been working, who hasn't been working on the, on the project. And you have portfolios and you have goals that you can set up for your team. So this is a great team collaborative um, tool that we can use, okay? So that's Asana. Um, all right. The next one is going to be Copilot in Teams. Um, the college is actually moving into Copilot right now, and we are starting to learn about more and more about Copilot, and it's a Microsoft uh, product, right? So, what does Copilot do in Teams? It summarizes key discussion points and suggestion actions items in the real time during a meeting or in a call. So it's a great way to summarize your meeting notes and what you talked about. And what are the key? Um, what are your action items that you need to work on? So it makes again. Okay, you see this is very very. Um, very, it's linked to the, your communication, right? Because it's gonna help you communicate better with your teammates. So it's um I don't have the the um I don't have the 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 app yet, but because we're working on it. But this is how it works. So it it uh, copilot work, works along with you. You have more effective communication. It summarizes key discussions. Um, you can catch up on chats. You can ask what well, you know, like what was the 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 subject with, is so and so on su on such day, right? As as long as you use your prompts correctly. You can bring everything together in teams. Uh, so this is yet not uh, out yet, but it's it's coming to our teams and our Microsoft environment. So um, you know you can use try different prompts, and it's going to list the main ideas uh, that, that you discuss with the meeting so far. So this is another great team and collaborative uh, tool that you can use to enhance your teamwork soft skills. All right. The next soft skill that we're gonna to touch upon is problem solving skills. So these are skills uh, that you know allow you to identify and understand a problem, right? Um, and then solve it. We have this issue on an everyday basis in the in our professional environment, right? And uh, we need to have some facts together in order to solve a problem as objectively as we can. That's going to be a that's a great um that's gonna be a, a great skill. I need to be redundant. <laughs> it's gonna be a great skill for your problem solving skill, right? So um it can involve solving problems that impact the entire company or challenges that it might impact just you, right? So you need to identify those two. But Either way, you do need to have your facts together and you need to have some data to back your problem solving, right? So um, here are the, the, the tools that I found or that I'm, I am recommending for problem solving skills. So um, the first one is Google Col Colab. 
right? Um, Google, Google Colab is a free cloud-based platform that allows users to write and execute Python code in a, a Jupyter notebook environment. Um, it's widely used for machine learning, data analysis, and problem solving, problem solving exercises. So Google Colab is a, let me show you what this looks like. It's like a coding encyclopedia, basically, right? Um, you can start coding or generate with AI. It's um, you will have a you know a, a lot of information there that you can look upon and um, that you can look at and see if the data that you're feeding it is actually making sense. Okay, um, it requires a little bit of of programming, but uh, nothing that you cannot learn or that actually ChatGPT can give you and you can feed it, right? So um, so that's a, this is Google Colab and it's mostly for data analysis, all right? The next one that we have is ChatGPT. So this ChatGPT, uh, ChatGPT uh, we use it on an everyday basis, right? Um, what I use ChatGPT for, it's basically, um, I, I use, actually I use the paid version. So it gives me the option of exploring chat uh, GPTs right here. So in my, you know, this I are already like, um, uh, are already uh, like sets of information that has been programmed to detect that, uh, that the, the, the specific information that you need to retrieve, right? So um, in chat GPT, well, the regular one, you can also ask it, you know, right? So, but for my purposes today, I need a data-driven GPT. So here we go. So this this GPT is already trained to give me data, to give me information based on the data that I'm going to feed it, right? It has been programmed. It has been already identifying the same um, the same uh, uh, the same information. So, you know, I, you know, it will give you options on how to ask it. I want to ask specific questions about data and um, combine different data. You can feed it, you can feed um, your files to it and it will give you a report on your data, which will help you make a, a, a sound and very um, intelligent decision, right? Because it's best to do it on facts and you know, and using facts is the best way to make a decision. All right, so this is our problem solving tools. And the last, the next one and the last one that I we're um, talking about today is going to be on adaptability, right? Um, so adaptability, it's change, right? It's really adjust, uh, adjusting to changing circumstances circumstances. This is what we, we do every day. You know, we think we're going to have, you know, this type of day, but guess what? No, something else happens. So we need to accommodate. We need to change. We need to make sure that we are moving with change, with new um, generations, with new upgrades, with new technology, everything, right? And also is our willingness to learn. We have to be open mind. We need to be open minded and our willingness to learn. Again, this connects with your teamwork, it connects with your communication, and it connects with your problem solving skills. So all your soft skills are connected in some on, on another kind of way, right? Because in the teamwork soft skill environment, you are going to be learning. You are you have to be open mind to listen to somebody's opinion, right? And somebody's point of view. Um, so here are some two, uh, two uh, uh, tools that I found to enhance adaptability. So the first one is Course Era. So Course Era, it's a, a it's a website that offers courses from top universities. They're free, but it uses the AI um, to recommend you courses based on your interests. So you are feeding that machine that information, and it's going to be recommending you some of that. Uh, you know what what is fits best with whatever you are your interest is okay 
So, you know, it, it helps you to continuously adapt and up upgrade your skills. So this is where we have our open mind. This is where we have our learning cap capability, right? So in course era, you can actually, it's free. So you can sign in with your uh, Google account. You can create a Google account. You can sign in with your um with your uh, email account. So again, you will explore all the courses that you wanna that you wanna learn. So here we I wanna learn today on machine learning. And it's gonna give me all this, all those results, right? And then you start filtering which one works for you. So I'm gonna take two here. So then Coursera is gonna come back and it's gonna recommend based on my interests what other courses are out there that are gonna work for my learning experience. So this is course era. Let me move now into our last tool, which is Habitica. So Habitica is a habit building app that is gamified. So you can gamify your tasks and habits. So let's say I wanna create a habit to, you know, to go walking because you know another thing it's very important you know take care of yourself self you know uh, you know like I need to create a good habit have eat healthy and um, write my tasks down and have it you know have it write my tasks right so this one uses AI, AI track AI to track your progress and provides insights helping you building adaptability by setting and achieving personal goals Okay, so there you go. So personal goals are going to be great for your adaptability because if, you know, your goals are met, you're going to be more, um, um, not res uh, you're going to be more open to change. All right. So this is what Habitica, again, you have the free version and you have the paid version, right? So here I'm going to add a habit. I can add a daily thing. I can do my to-dos and then, you know, I'm going to start collecting either, you know, some health here. I'm going to lose, if I don't complete my habit, I'm going to lose health. And, you know, it's a gamify option, but it's powered by AI. Okay. So you can use a challenge. You can create your own challenge. You can discover your challenge. You can have a group. You can play with a group like, hey, you know, like we're going to work, we're going to walk a 5,000 5,000 steps today. Okay, so you can set that together and everybody, you know, it's working together and you're creating that personal goal habit. All right, so this is Habitica. All right. Um, so what are some of our key takeaways from this uh, presentation, right? Yes, I love Habitica too. It's so cool. It's like, you know, you're gamifying. I, I love everything that has to do with gamifying and making everything seem like easier to learn and happy, you know, and having a happy time, right? Um, so what are your key takeaways? What are our key takeaways today? So here are some of the top soft skills throughout the years, right? So 15 year, 50 years ago, communication, leadership, problem solving. Again, 30 years ago, teamwork, adaptability, interpersonal skills. And 10 years ago, emotional intelligence, critical thinking, and flexibility. You think that, do you think that they are similar or like, you know, like maybe in 1974, you know, what, uh, like, you know, it's similar or, or we are in the same, we're coming back to the same soft skills as, you know, 50 years ago. What do you think? Or do you think that we are just, you know, using them as, you know, the time goes by? Um, so, yeah. Um, so emotional intelligence, right? Emotional intelligence actually encompasses all of the, all of the soft skills. Emotional intelligence is basically learning how to deal with a problem and, you know, and how to, how to, uh, yeah. You know, using your EQ right now is one of a top, one of the top soft skills. Yeah. Yeah, it's adapt and flex are, are similar uh, for sure. Um, you know, a, interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence are connected as well, right? So they haven't changed. They haven't changed that much throughout the years, right? 
it's hard to believe that 1974 was 50 years ago, right? But um, <laughs> uh, so, you know, communication, again, was a big one. And um, so the same thing, but change depending on our era. I agree. Yes. All are the same, all our versions of the same thing, but change depending on our era. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. All right. So for 2024, what are most, what are most in demand skills, right? Communication, customer service, leadership, project management, uh, problem solving, teamwork, analytics. Again, uh, and prob you need analytics to problem solve, right? You need uh, research to problem solve because you're going to need those facts. You need leadership to for your project management, for your teamwork, right? But it's this is the 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 creme on the top. It's you know the top skill that is the most important at the moment is adaptability, and basically that's because you know we've we've we had so many changes in you know in a few years, right? We had the pandemic. Now we we're coming back from the pandemic. So this is the adaptability has been a little bit difficult for mo a lot of people, right? So the change of environment, changing from working from home to changing back to the office, is just that that it's one of the soft skills that it's most in demand at the moment. All right. And connecting it to AI, bringing it back to AI, here are the soft skills that distinguish people in AI roles. So people in jobs with the highest share of AI talents are most likely to have these soft skills compared with people in jobs with lowest share of AI talent, right? So um, here are the top A jobs, you know, design thinking, operations management, analytics, problem strategic thinking, self-learning, communication and ethics and ethics. All those, all the, the those soft skills are integrated in these AI roles. This is from LinkedIn. Again, um, soft skills are becoming more valuable, more valuable as AI advances, right? Because again, the machines, the, they can learn patterns and everything, but they cannot, they do not have empathy. They do not, you know, they don't know how to process uh, information and, in, you know, in, in, in a, a right away, right? So, you know, you have to have all the skills in place in order to make good decisions and work better and have a better professional life. Design thinking. Okay, I have a question. So design thinking is um is actually uh working with courses and uh creating new um it will be like new ways of thinking, right? Um it's um it's a way that a design thinking is actually okay. Um design thinking is it's a process that you use to come up with a solution. So first of all, you have to identify a problem. Then you have to see what is, why is that problem happening? Then you identify some solutions from the problem. And then you have to identify um, a way to solve the problem. So that's the way that design thinking works. I, yeah, I, I don't have my notes with me before the sign to thinking right now, but this is most more or less what, what it is, right? So it's a way of problem solving. Did that answer the question? For AI. Excellent. Okay, great. All right. So here we come to our last question, right? How do you plan to integrate the insights and AI tools we discussed today into your daily work, personal development to enhance your soft skills? You can put it in the chat. You can unmute yourself. You can just, uh, we can, you know, discuss. Like personally, for me, it will be Habitica because I love gaming, gamifying, and I love, you know, like, like, and that will, will be great to do it in a group and just enhance our teamwork. Yeah, I'm very curious about it. I think that can help me. Think. <laughs> we can try it, Terry. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I'm happy. <laughs> well, again, everybody, 
thank you so much. Um, I would like to use replica. Yes, replica. It's it's very interesting. Replica. Uh, Ms. Smith, uh, Kania Smith is saying, I would like to use Replica to help with my communication skills. It's actually really interesting because I asked her, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, I want to, I want to practice my interview for, for, to be a, a teacher. What, what do I need, you know? And then it, it was just giving me all these prompts and having a conversation with me was a little bit scary, but it was very fun. Okay. So I, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. I hope, um, you know, if you have any other questions, this is my email. You can email me and um, and just uh, any questions. And I thank you so much for joining today. And um, and of course, you know, I would need you to please fill out our survey at the end.